This is Adam Corpulent Geek, and that is Sci Fi Christina. And we are here to talk and give you our instant reactions to Black Panther. Well, not quite instant, but still within 24 hours, so still fresh. Even if they were just laying out in the field, they didn't need to be refrigerated. Boo. Sorry. Oh, what the heck do we talk about first? We've got pages of notes and little things. We made voice memos. Uh, after Some seeing of us them. successfully. I think we should start where our overall impression. I thought it was fantastic. I loved it. I normally, with all the Marvel movies, I'm I'm a bit jaded and it's like, yeah, I see where things are going and I see where what things are happening because I'm familiar with so many of the characters. Mm -hmm. And in, in my Excite video that I did yesterday, I mentioned about the whole, uh, how Guardians of the Galaxy didn't really float my boat because it was a little bit too funny for my liking mm -hmm. but this one i didn't have a lot of knowledge about wakanda at all or the black panther character and so i was there and it was all new stuff to me and i was like "Ooh, what's that how is that whoa cool i i loved it i just thought it was beautiful yeah I it was extremely it just, beautiful it was beautiful not i mean not just wakanda but People were beautiful. Their their outfits were mm. beautiful. Um, the the cinematography was beautiful. I mean, there was just it was just so stunning. It was powerful. I really did love it. It was a a breath of fresh air. There's now been so many Marvel movies, and everything has to have its own feeling. And it, it, they've done a pretty good job of that. But this one had a a it had a a, a special. Yeah, feeling and it was it was good. I went into this assuming I was going to love it because I loved everything I saw of it, but I can yeah. clearly identify the moment that I was. Oh, this is cool! It's early on when. By the way, spoilers. <laughs> um, yes. it was early on when they had the the they were following the convoy of trucks. Uh -huh. And and they brought up the the table that ha did which the I loved their, yeah their entire um like technology based on sand projection was awesome when he picked up that truck and was looking at it and went and just brushed and the like roof of the truck came off and she she was sitting there oh that is so much a better thing than all this stupid blowing holographic stuff like uh, Iron Man was very much his his yeah. technology was a lot of um. Like moving, manipulating things, and often he would have gloves on so that when he was manipulating it, and he like turns things and pulls it apart, and, and yeah, which is cool. But uh, yeah, I, I love this is the, way cooler the grittiness, and I, I loved. I mean, and even in their holograms, they come up pixelated, like the coming up out of sand, mm -hmm. and then become a picture. And the back of them is still that like because you don't need to see the back, and it's oh, still yeah. very sandy and rough. I I loved that specifically, like, and I loved its use in the beginning. Um, when they were telling the the myth story about yeah. um, you know the five tribes of Wakanda, and I love that that was in that that moving sand, you know things you know changing and, mm -hmm. and going away, and I I just thought that was that, and that was, was awesome a very looking. quick way of telling all that, and you getting the the history of Wakanda. Yeah, and like, I so and the funny thing is I thought that that was setting up the fifth tribe as being the bad guys. I thought that yeah. Michael B. Jordan was going to be a, a you know somehow yeah. attaching himself to that tribe. And see, we and don't then, know, so it was. It was uh, a yeah, fun, it was. It was fantastic. The story was, went somewhere else. Yep, I, it did I, I, and especially after not just that initially looked like a setup for that, but then when the challenge came from uh, the tribe of the north, mm -hmm. tribe of the north. That's what I'll call. Them. Uh, I thought for sure, like, oh, that's who my Michael B. Jordan. Killmonger was gonna team up with mm -hmm. to, yeah. to get stuff done. It's like, no, he's gonna go with his friend. That makes it so much worse. It and it does, and mean. better, but yeah, you know, I, worse. I had a, a note about the, yeah, the bad guy, the bad guy plot, and that was what I loved. Like, they originally felt like it set it up for the fifth tribe to be that, um, and it wasn't, uh, especially when they came in for his crowning combat and they were, you know, trying to challenge. Nope. And then uh, then it was Claw. He was kind of a long-term bad guy for them because he had stolen from them. And now he's a little kooky crazy. And uh, you didn't know where he was, was going for awesome. that. awesome. But I, I also thought that as soon as we met Killmonger in the museum, that and because Claw had that like frenetic craziness to him, that you knew that... And, and we knew Killmonger was the bad guy. Yeah, the main from, bad guy because he had a, a panther suit. Yeah, yeah, and he had a calmness about him that was more evil, yeah. whereas uh, Claw had that like craziness to him. Where I mean, you you knew he was unpredictable, but 
in the end, it couldn't really sustain through yep, a, a plot. But, but he got away with it for 30 years. Yes. So uh, I'm I'm surprised he did. I told, he seemed... I told, mentioned to, to my brother that I wanted to go back and watch Ultron because I wanted to see if he had been affected by the Scarlet Witch. And I'm wondering if, like, his... Like, if he lost his mind a little bit more after his encounter with Ultron. Which, I'm sure he kind of did, because he also lost his arm. We'll yeah. have to... We'd have to double-check that. ...do that research before um, the deep-dive review that we're sure to do sometime this week. Yeah, but then Maybe. Killmonger ends up coming in and... Uh, and Killmongering. And Killmongering. And I, I think that, because I heard you uh, asking some questions in your notes about what was his plan. I thought... I thought initially that he needed Claw to get him to Wakanda, that he wouldn't have known exactly where it was, that they wouldn't have taken that kind of information out of the country because Killmonger only learned everything from, at least I believe, from reading the books that he found that his dead father left behind. Mm -hmm. And I wouldn't think that they would put in those books, Wakanda's here. and Here's a lot long of Wakanda. Yeah. So I thought that initially when he turned on Claw that he needed him to get him there but then he shot him and i was like well that's going to make it tough to find wakanda but well i think wakanda so the country is known so he landed at like one of the public faces of wakanda yes okay. cuz and like they that were makes... farmers and and right. like that's why he approached that the, the that tribe i think is like the more farming and um yeah because there, there definitely was before they flew through the hologram thing there was yeah yes yeah, so, all right so that's good so I, I, think did that's not... I think he he literally just drug in claw's body and was like i'll eventually find someone and be like i know you don't like this guy let me see the king <laughs> yeah pretty sure that was his... and and because he'd had all that extensive black ops training he knew how he, to infiltrate yeah. a a um a government and that was why he he knew the time to strike was now and he just used claw to uh, to get their attention because he knew that would draw them out. The stealing the vibranium uh, oh, yeah, weapon yeah. from the from the museum. I loved the. I thought that the amount of humor in this one was perfect. Um, I and now I thought the amount of humor in Ragnarok was was perfect for that movie. I thought that amount of humor humor was funny for Ragnarok. For Ragnarok, okay. For this movie, because T'Challa is a more staid and noble and reserved type person purpose person uh the the whole movie took on that more kind of reserved graceful and noble feeling but there was humor in there it was humor in the beginning very from the very beginning when they he was going on that mission and, and the general yeah. don't freeze and he's like i never freeze and he goes down and he freezes yeah and, him, and that's hilarious that that was funny the his interactions with his sister were, yes. were funny she she had some of the best lines yeah. in throughout the whole thing and, and and you could tell her personality was very like little sister um and scientist engineer excited about you know what she was doing yeah. yeah as soon as i saw that she was the the smart one i was like oh yeah that's cool she was totally the michael also sister. mentioned that she was totally like q when he was no, going sorry. on that one mission yeah he was going on that one mission mm -hmm. yeah and she was yeah, like that and was here definitely... you have here's your this and then we've got this thing and you hit these buttons and it does this and i was like haha he's got his own q but yeah going back to the humor if the the king of the north that was my next point in humor. I'm sorry, oh, I'm I was just sorry. talking about her about, uh, about yeah, the, the Q thing because we had gotten to her. Okay. But yeah, no, I loved I loved that level of humor on for him as well because I think because we'd had them set up to be what I thought was going to be the bad guys. Yeah. Like that that yeah. level of humor kind of broke the ice a little bit, mm -hmm. and it was even funnier when you know the entire time he knew that he had T'Challa. Like they thought he was dead, and he yeah. let them continue yeah, to think that true. for the entirety of that scene, and then he was like. <laughs> Come with me. And he was like, look what I found. <laughs> yeah. Hey, look at um, this. But no, that was, that was like, I, I started guffawing almost when every time, man, we keep calling him Agent Bilbo Baggins. And <laughs> I've forgotten exactly who Martin Freeman's character is. Agent Bilbo Baggins. Agent Bilbo Baggins. I, uh, Ross. Agent Ross. Every time he started he, to open his mouth and talk and they were just grunting at him. Yeah, and then the, was... like, the grunts spread everywhere and he's like, I guess I won't say anything. I'm like, that's hilarious. Your opinion is not needed or wanted here. No, that's what he oh, was saying. To <laughs> that worked almost perfectly. <laughs> Night, everybody. Uh, you look so stunned. <laughs> I was like, you're just taking my channel away. But that's what we do here. We share opinions. That's what the Mountain Tribe King. 
<laughs> was saying to him. Uh, yeah, and then threatening to feed him to his children. And I thought for sure that it was going to be some sort of gorilla. Like, I thought he was going to say, feed you to my gorillas, because everything about them had that uh, gorilla, gorilla yeah. um, animal aspect. But he just said children. And I was like, wow, that got serious suddenly. And he was like, nah, we're vegetarians. <laughs> it's like, ah! Yeah. So I I, I I found that to be amusing. I like that. I did not think it was um, jarring. It was it, the first time I thought about humor in the movie. Which, it, it was, so it was a little more, um, it was heavier handed than some of the other humor throughout. But I also thought it was hilarious. And I think you kind of needed hilarity at that point. Cause you, like, it's true, everything. Everyone thought T'Challa was, T'Challa was dead. And you knew he had to, we knew he did was still anyone alive. Sit, yeah, no one sitting in the audience thought he was still dead. Oh, I'll just throw him off here and we won't watch his body splinter on the rocks below. No, no, no. No, no one thought he was dead, but in that point in the movie, everyone, all the characters thought yeah. he was dead, and so it was very heavy. So all the purple flowers done now, right? So there's going to be no more Black Panthers after this. I guess so, unless they find one somewhere, you know, grown in a yeah. crevice. You would think that someone had some seeds somewhere. I would hope so. They really should seed save. Like, that yeah. would be the place to do it. I thought she was sneaking down to, like, grab plants so that they could save them and replant them at some point. I didn't Isn't think that... she would just... Well, she... well, I mean... No, she grabbed one heart-shaped herb, and they fed it to him and made him Black Panther again. Well, yes, but her plan was probably, <clears throat> let me go rescue some of this before they destroy it all. Oh no, they are there already. Let me just grab whatever I can and okay, get yes. out so I don't get my butt handed to me. Yes. 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 Also, one other thing that Killmonger needed to do after he burned all the turn you into Black Panther flowers, he should have found and destroyed all the whatever they fed T'Challa 14 times during this thing to take away the Black Panther power because that's not going to be a good thing to have around. If you're that leader guy. What's next on your notes? Love me some powerful women. This this movie was full of them. Mm -hmm. Full of the powerful women. Angela Bassett was just stately. I mean, she was great as Queen Mother. Lupita uh, was Nakia, and she did that one excellently. Ooh. What? What? Nothing. I was just thinking about her. <laughs> um, and I loved the general. A general, I think that was a Koye. I loved it. I loved it all. I loved it all. I loved their their self assuredness and the absolute ability to just kind of walk into a place and be like, "Yeah, I'm. I'm the odds here look fine. This is fine. <laughs> this is all fine." Nice. I commend the general with sticking with her job she could have fled and gone with um nakia and queen mother but she said no that's that's not what i'm serving here i'm serving our country mm -hmm. and right now our country is being led by this guy and i'm going to follow and him he and, legally got there and, and he followed yeah, all the he, 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 proper things filed his forms <laughs> and Filed his forms and everything. I commend that opinion and that amount of that's that's a, a type of patriotism, and I thought that that was pretty awesome to show. It became clear how destabilizing he was and in, in the decisions he was making, especially when T'Challa was still alive, and he was like, "Oh no, we're just gonna I'm just gonna send the people out there to kill him." And she was like, "Nope, <laughs> that's not how this works. Technically, the challenge is still going on because neither of you are dead, and neither of you have said yeah. yield." She was still following the law. She laws. was still following the law, and when he decided to break it, that was when she was like. Nope, I was all I was all all over that. I really did really enjoy, enjoy that. All right, I want to babble for a few seconds. Can I talk about her and her husband? Yes, for her love. I oh, they were yes, married. no, that's good. That's let's so do that. I I assume that they were married. She and the leader of the Blue Cloaks. I wish I knew his name. The Blue, uh, Blue Cloak. Tribe. I told you his name. His I know, name I didn't is write Wakabi. Down. Wakabi. She, yes. I'm terrible with names. All names. <laughs> I only know her name because we have a legally binding document. I knew it, it was funny because as the rhino was bearing down, she stepped in front of it and it stopped and licked her. Yeah, <laughs> it was glorious. And then was like, she I was hate like, this "Animal." It was it was beautiful because she stops and looks up at her husband and he was just like, "Oh shit, <laughs> this is not gonna go well." And so he gets down and he was like, still trying to be like, <laughs> and she's no points her spear at him. He's like, "Would you kill me?" And she was like, "For Wakanda, in a minute." And someone in the audience went, "Yes, yeah, she would," <laughs> and I <laughs> loved it. Yeah. I loved it. There were a lot of 
powerful women in the audience with me and it was glorious and he was yeah i guess i'll just be dropping my weapon because <laughs> this isn't gonna work for me <laughs> well he also had the benefit of being able to look around and see the whole fight was going against him yes so he, he might he might have thought a few more ticks if uh if the fight was going better for his side yeah yeah but I still think the I mean, outcome I'm not saying he same. should have. I'm just yeah. saying that guy. No, he showed he showed he showed good leadership there, and I, I think up until I mean, it, it was it was definitely wrong for them to follow Killmonger's order to go out and kill T'Challa. Up until then, I mean, he 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 really was thinking along the lines of this is what I I want for Wakanda. I'm going to back this guy because I yeah. I like the ideas he's saying. I I want to do that thing. Yeah, and you get to a certain point when you follow your leaders that even if they're telling you to do something that isn't right, if you be- believe in the other 90% of the things, yeah. Sometimes <clears throat> you go the extra distance. But with what was his name? Wakabi, I still feel like we were missing a scene with him. And I know there's got to be scenes on the floor. And believe me, I understand. You got to cut some stuff out. You can't have everything in there that everyone wants. This is just me personally. I would have loved a scene between he and T'Challa or he and the general. Because his his turn codedness didn't really seem to have any kind of an impact on me. As I, I was sitting there watching, he just like decided to do this thing, and th- there needed to be a scene where they talked about it before the blocking rhino scene. And w- between either of those two, it would have been good because the the general still could have, uh, you know, you have that. And especially since they had the scenes earlier when they made them see like, seem like buddies, uh, Blue Cloak and T'Challa. So I I th- I thought that for them to make that comparison that they were so tight and so close uh, to show that early on and then not have any kind of I think the when T'Challa came back from that mission not having killed or brought Claw back and he said after all these years of your father's inaction I thought you would be different I felt like right there it kind of telegraphed that was when he yes right. like he is now not on his side and I don't like I understand there may have been a scene shot that plumbed the depths of more of his um you know kind of going against T'Challa and T'Challa um being disappointed in it but I don't feel it was really needed because I feel like at that moment you were like yeah, yeah he's not going yeah. to I, I understand he's not gonna vote it, for... it it didn't break the movie in any which oh, way yeah, yeah. this is just something I personally would have liked if I had to find stuff where the movie was lacking I'm reaching for to be cover enough about how the rhinos were awesome and I, I want my own I think rhino we, to ride we need to say uh rhinos are off as an awesome a little more because, because they were pretty awesome uh, I would like a rhino to ride just because I feel like I could climb up on a rhino and not hurt it Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, horses are still, like, horses see me coming and they'd be like, <laughs> uh, Another scene that I really enjoyed was when Killmonger was brought into the throne room. I don't know if he purposefully, like, had to manipulate the people into asking him his name for ceremonial purposes to be able to challenge the king or something, or if that was just his ego wanting to be asked so he could shout out the way he did I think it was actually a form of manipulation not that he had to do it but that he wanted to do it he knew if he could get someone else in that room or T'Challa to ask him who he was although I think he had an idea T'Challa knew and that was why he started like he he was still asking him but it was a form of manipulation it was part of his I think training to undermine a government if he could, because he he has he was wetting everyone's appetite to be like, well, well, who is he? Like, I we we really should know. Yeah, he keeps saying it. Like, maybe this is something we should know. And so then it even right. kind of painted T'Challa in in a since he was unwilling to tell them. Was and un- he yeah, knew since he knew who and was, he put wasn't him in a weak asking position. him. Yeah, yeah, that that was. A, I think that's a cool what it was scene, more. Right? It was more of a chess move than it was anything. I, I enjoyed that scene a whole lot. Yeah, yeah. You know what else I enjoyed? Even though they mentioned earlier that they weaved the vibranium into their clothes, I still didn't see coming that the the blue cloaks, blue cloaks were really like these powerful shield things. And when that happened, I was like, oh, yep. normally I see that kind yep. of stuff. And that was weaved awesome. into the clothes, I think was yes. pretty much what I said. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's great when, when movies can do that to me because I... I yeah, you do see things yeah, ahead and, of time. And <laughs> I, I enjoy that. I enjoy being able. And that's why like, I purposefully didn't do a deep dive before going to see this about Wakandan history 
and and old Black Panther comics. I wanted to be surprised and let them show me via the movie and be entertained. The only thing that was kind of like neon light pointing at this, this is going to be important later were those uh, the, the things by the monorails. Monorail. Monor uh, yeah, 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 yeah. What are those things by the monorails? <laughs> What are those things those that, are, that render uh, vibranium, vibranium totally inert and everything? Those are oh. vibranium dampers. Oh, really? Mm. Oh. <laughs> we'll put them up right up here on the wall. Mm. <laughs> so those are the things I got to steal and totally put all over my house. Check. Okay. <laughs> I don't know why you would make something to, like, give your enemies. Uh, because she made those. The she, vibranium dampers? Yeah. Because they were, move, they were trying to move the vibranium faster in the mine to get them... You know, to mine faster. And so since it was unstable, you couldn't transport it at high yeah, speed. She's like, so so I, so I could travel at high speed? I made these vibranium So I created to this thing that to... can cancel out our, our biggest asset. And and no, that's never going to get stolen by anyone because things like that never happen. Oh, where'd our, all our vibranium go? <laughs> Who took our vibranium? Hello? Where's our vibranium? Oh, jeez. So, did you have uh, anything else you want to cover? I have something about one of the end scenes. Ooh. Did you have other uh -oh. things you want to talk about? Uh, no, I think we're good. Uh, okay, cool. End I, scenes. I, I thought the movie was full of really good quotes. Um, I think his sister had kind of quite a few of them. <laughs> Some of them were funny. Like, the, the quote that in the end I'll talk about uh, is, I think, just good. Um, but I, I did want to touch on... Uh, when he was at, he was walking her, she was walking him around doing her, you know, James Bond Q thing. And he was like, what are those? And she goes, I think the bigger question is what are those? Uh, I guess. <laughs> and she was pointing yeah. him those at shoes his shoes. Were awesome. That got a big laugh. In the oh theater. yeah. And then she gives him these like two pads. He stands on them. They become shoes. And she goes, I'm thinking of calling them sneakers. <laughs> the audience was like, bah. Why was she so thrown off by, by, flip-flops or sandals your sandals not a thing in wakanda i am sure they are although i think with their level of technology there's probably a whole bunch of other things he could have been wearing and and it, as he said I, I thought i was gonna go i would go old, old school for my first day right. i think they really just needed to like wedge that in there to so she could right. introduce the shoes so now i'm trying to and think, have a joke does do, does everything they have have vibranium in it like so Wouldn't underwear you? have vibranium in it? Wouldn't you? No. So there were two uh, end credit scenes. One was like the mid credits, so after they do the um, the you know major title cards, and he was giving a speech to the UN, basically mm -hmm. announcing um, Wakanda is here and we're ready to to share our stuff. And um, one of the things he said was that it was something about in times of strife. He said, "Fools build barriers; the wise build bridges." And I really liked it. I liked it because it, like many great speeches, it had alliteration between barriers and bridges. I liked it because I feel like it was a comment on the times. What? I know. Barriers, you say? I, I, what I, barrier is someone trying to build right now? Th there was a lot of parallels with things that are currently going on. I, well, I, and, and I feel I mean, like every time we give a reaction video about something, I am always hearkening back to how science fiction specifically, um, but m almost all of our our fantasy is chock full of allegory for what's mm -hmm. going on today because that's how we're able to tell stories that are palatable about what's going on now is by changing the names to protect the innocent. <laughs> <laughs> ah, did you see what yes, I did there? You I liked it. I did, knew you would. Yes. Um, I, I think that that's how it, it helps people you know, open their mind to thinking about things and, and yeah. to thinking about what we're going through in a different light so that we don't just stay entrenched in our own ideas and, and ideals. I, I thought that that was pretty much what he was talking to at that mo moment mm -hmm. that you know we're in a time of strife and we're in a time of conflict and we need to build more bridges and less barriers yeah so yeah but anyway since um, we don't get political here we're just gonna move on yeah and then you know some old white dude was like 
uh, you know, forgive me for asking, yeah. but what are farmers going to bring? And it was like, nah. <laughs> uh. <laughs> no. SMH. <laughs> that was, uh, I liked it. Did you have anything on that code, that end credit, end credit scene? Uh, 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 that end credit scene? Uh, no. Oh. oh, wait. I'm sorry. Can we go back to something else from before? Sure. Uh, I I really enjoyed Gollum being interviewed by yeah. Agent Baggins. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah. That, that, was, that was enjoyable to me. And I want more of that. More. <laughs> More I interaction more, between former Lord of the Rings characters? Not necessarily former Lord of the Rings characters. Actors that were characters in movies together in other genres, other other series of films together. Yeah. Ooh, you know what I'm looking forward to it then? Oh, here we go. Uh, perhaps uh, Agent Ross and Doctor Strange. Ah, yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah, they, Come on. Yeah, he, since he was such a big part of this one, I can see yes. him being in there with that one. Yeah, I didn't even think about that. Because then you would, and then I especially love the scenes with Iron Man and Doctor Strange, since they both played Sherlock, Sherlock Holmes. Yes. yes. One on TV, one in movies. Yes. Oh, so much, so much, so much crossing the streams in a good way, not blowing up. So the last uh, end credit scene, the very, very end credit scene, uh, was Bucky Barnes. Yeah, being fixed because apparently that's what uh, that's what T'Challa's sister does is fix white boys. Yeah, all right. Yeah, so all right, so he's all fixed now. Hopefully, I assume that they were deprogramming him. That was right, that cool. was what they were doing, and and cool, since cool, he's cool. unfrozen and allowed to interact with children, mm -hmm. I'm guessing that it's been successful. Yeah, and that you know next time we see him, they will have uh, fitted him with some sort of vibranium awesomeness. Yeah, uh, oh, I didn't even think about that. I would love to do a study and see if every character in the Marvel universe who has lost an arm has always lost the left one. Is Coulson's left arm cut off? Uh, yeah, because it's more useful. Because it's a shield arm, because yeah. he had the shield on it thing. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I feel like they've always lost their left arm. All right, we will investigate this. Yes, uh, cause thing to do. In the Deadpool trailer, it was Cable's left arm was, was yeah, specialized. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, what, wait, what do I'm it sorry. mean? I just remembered another thing I want to go back to. When Q is showing off the suits, and he kicks the suit, and it flies across the room. She's like, what are you doing? <laughs> It flew across the room. I have no idea. Like, it had to be a helium mannequin. I think it was like to... styrofoam. Yeah, I mean, uh, isn't the suit itself have any kind of weight to it? They're... I love the fact, though, that she explained what, exactly what the suit did. She mm -hmm. went and picked it up and said, okay. She starts recording him and says, now kick it in. And he goes, yeah. are you recording me? And she goes, it's for science. Do it again. <laughs> yeah. And he totally didn't pick up on the fact that it was going to blast him back. I, yeah, there, there's no way you kick. You, come on, come hey, on. Kick it again in exactly the same place you kicked it before. before. I love siblings. I have a sibling. Uh, yeah, and I would have done oh exactly the same thing to my sibling. And he would have completely fell for it. But he's not ruler of a country. <laughs> I had something to say about Bucky Barnes again, or the end credit oh, scene, I'm sorry, or I didn't something. Mean to. Oh no, no, no! It, actually, it was about her because one of her other Who lines her? that I loved. Uh, the sister. Yeah, we really should find out what right. her name is. Is it Shuri? I think it was Shuri. Um, because I remember I'm terrible with names. Uh, I'm, Shuri. Yes. Uh, yeah, I did it. When uh, Agent Ross wakes up on the table, don't scare me like that, Colonizer. Oh yeah, 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 Colonizer. <laughs> that was. Colonizer, was, I think that was really my my favorite one. That, and there are two Grace Grace Jones looking chicks. Grace Jones, did I say that right? He said that. No, he didn't say that. It was um, yeah, it's these two Grace Jones looking chicks. That was when they were um, in L.A. in the past. Um, oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, the not Forrest Whitaker. Not Forrest Whitaker. Yeah, Forrest Whitaker's youngest younger yeah. self looking out the window. And I was like, bah. That mm. was pretty funny too. And that that actor who played um, T'Chaka's brother. The actor who played T'Chaka's brother. Yes. Yes, he... Is the one from This Is Us. Sterling K. Brown. Sterling K. Brown, yeah. He is the only character name in IMDb that's listed that doesn't have a link that goes to his character. All the rest of them are links, and you can click on it and go to a different page. His is the only one. Oh. Maybe that's some kind of secret hint. Probably not. Probably not. Yep. So... Anything else? Sorry, I went back there a couple times. I actually had another deep thought... Oh, and I don't... oh, Jack Handy time. Yes, yes, yes. Because <laughs> um, it was something that Michael and I had touched on when we were talking last night. All of the leaders in Wakanda mm -hmm. were thoughtful. 
And I think that's what I really loved. Like, and especially by the end of the movie, the fifth tribe, the mountain tribe's leader, basically come back to the fold. He was in the throne room at the end, the last throne room well, shot. Because he respected this king. He did. He yeah. T'Challa did a great job of. And no one and saw. And I, I think what I loved about it was when, he, when even after um, when he was trying to get him to yield in the combat, he he said to him. You know, just yield. Don't be stupid. Your people need you. Like he was respecting him. He mm-hmm. was saying, like you, you came here to do a thing, and you've done that, and you gave it a, a fantastic try. But you know, don't throw yourself away because you need to go back and be a leader for your your people. And I, I think I loved that. And I think that he couldn't have gone to the UN and give an entire speech about how we needed to come together and build bridges if he hadn't pulled that. Th- try back right yeah. because now like how would how he would took it be care of his house he did he took care of ourselves but even his uncle had reason he had and, and good thoughtful reason as to why he was taking the steps that he was taking and why he had um betrayed t'chaka and it, it wasn't out of malice or vengeance or spite or feeling like he you know wasn't getting the glory that was due him it was because he had seen the outside world and he wanted to do more right. and that was that was what that internal strife was his son had taken it to the next level he was he was um, operating out of revenge the problem and, and the thing that i really loved loved about the story was that T'Challa very clearly laid that blame at his father's feet. It hurt him to do it, but he said to him and to all the other ancestors, you were wrong. We need to be more out there and we need to take responsibility for the 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 problems that we also have helped create. Mm. The, the, the son should never have been left behind yeah. because he uh, and he knew it as soon as he knew of a son he knew that he, that was going to be a problem that might come back to bite them in the butt. Which, I mean, it was doing it like as he was talking to yeah, Nikki about yeah, it. But, I mean, he was he was, he was very dead. wise. Like, the he it was it was a great it was great to see a lot of thoughtfulness. Yes, and I I do enjoy that. Yeah, it's good to see that they're setting up the next leader of the Avengers for when they brush away the old team off of Thanos's underside of his boot. <laughs> Because it's going to happen. They got to get some new young blood in there. You were just talking about that. It reminded me of something. During that fight and during that end sequence there, I remember like popping around in my seat a little bit. I was excited to see. I didn't really think that he would kill him. But this was like a ritual combat thing, so maybe he would have had to. Before he got him in the submission hold, I was wondering, is he going to get him to yield haphazardly and not really turn his back to him and say, I'm not fighting you anymore because I've clearly beaten you and I don't want to kill you? Or uh, is he going to take it all the way and force him to submit to show his dominance as a king needs to? Uh, I liked how they had a semicircle of guards yeah, what was that it? were like shrinking in upon him. Well, because it forced the fight to happen like faster and faster instead of like leaving them plenty of space to to rest and to bob and weave. And so like as they they would take steps, and it was like half his guys and half the general. And so I I I, I kind of like that because it really did intensify the the feeling it was like someone's gonna die submit go over the falls like what's gonna happen they opened up drains in that river right mm-hmm. to make the falls less fallsy yes I and so they so. could do their thing yeah that's pretty cool it was pretty cool and i love the how the tribes were arrayed on the the rock face yeah in like rainbow order uh, yeah, and they come just... out and the pa- camera just keeps panning up and panning up yeah it's like how did some of them get there so quick, but but then they show that there's like little mini cave things yeah. in there. But you got to figure that they're so slippery. Hey, it's, you know, great risk comes great reward. They were just spectators. Well, they got to the reward of watching the combat trial. They would have got the reward of watching my fat ass slip all the way down, and <laughs> fall, ah, fall past the ritual combat. This ritual combat is if you can dodge the giant fat white guy coming flying <laughs> out one of these tubes. <laughs> You'll, you won't know which one it is. Yeah, Boom. It, it, it's, it's kind of like whack a mole. Dodge a fat guy. Boom. Oh man, <laughs> it's not cool. This was uh, this was an excellent movie. I just yeah, I just want to keep seeing more excellent art. I just love it. So we really enjoy Black Panther. We urge you to go out and see it this weekend, absolutely, or as soon as possible. Hopefully later on this week we'll have some more in depth, nuanced discussion on it for Corpulent Geek. I'm Adam. Sci-Fi Christina. And we will see you later.